We all know that hot objects, like burning logs, rapidly heat up anything that's put in contact with them. They also warm the objects all around them, even when there is no direct contact. Heat travels from hot regions to cooler regions, and it does so in three distinct ways, by convection, by conduction, and by radiation. Normally, heat is transmitted in all three ways at once, but for simplicity, we shall deal with each process separately. In this film, we'll discuss convection. This heated iron ball provides a demonstration of convection. The ball heats the air around it, and the air expands, becoming less dense. So it rises and produces air currents. A process called Schlieren photography makes these currents visible. The warmed air actually moves, carrying the heat energy with it. This form of heat transference is called convection. Convection also occurs in liquids. This tank is filled with water containing aluminium powder to make the currents visible. The water near the flame becomes hot and less dense. It rises and is replaced by cooler water from the side. Gradually, a continuous convection current is set up. And because convection requires the heated medium to move, it cannot occur in solids. Convection currents are an important factor in the design of the domestic hot water system, providing a constant supply of hot water in the storage tank. The water is heated in the boiler and rises by convection to the top of a storage tank above. Cooler water from the bottom of the storage tank flows into the boiler to replace the hot. A continuous circulation is set up and gradually the storage tank becomes filled with hot water. The hot water taps are connected to the top of the tank where the water is hottest. Another application of convection is the design of certain ventilation systems. This model will show you how they work. Normally, the air in the channel is still, and the smoke from the pipe travels straight upwards. But a source of heat at one end of the channel creates convection currents that cause air to flow through, so ventilating it. In the 18th century, coal mines were ventilated in this way, simply by lighting a fire at the bottom of one of the shafts. But in the home, the same effect can prove a nuisance. An open fire creates convection currents, and these are sometimes strong enough to produce an unpleasant draft. What's more, this draft chases most of the heat from the fire away up the chimney, warming the air above the house rather than in the house. This is clearly very wasteful, especially when the world's energy resources are becoming scarce. Modern appliances are designed to minimize the draft effect, so conserving heat and fuel. They provide ventilation without draft by causing air to circulate gently around the room, distributing the heat evenly. Now only a little heat is wasted up the chimney. Convection has also been used in man's attempts to fly. Hot air balloons were developed in France in the 1780s. The hot air was provided by large fires on the launching platform, and once filled, the balloons were carried into the air. Recently, there has been renewed interest in hot air ballooning. The modern balloons use compressed gas as the fuel to provide the hot air. But the principles on which they work are the same as in the 18th century balloons. In effect, they're getting caught up in a convection current. Hot air balloons carry their own personal convection current around with them. But gliders have to make use of naturally occurring convection. These natural convection currents are called thermals. They occur because the sun does not heat the ground evenly. 
For instance, the roofs of houses get hot more quickly than the green vegetation of fields and woods. So warm air currents rise from towns and villages. Ripe cornfields or sunny wind-protected slopes also produce thermals. The glider pilot uses these currents to carry his aircraft higher into the air. He then flies across country, losing height as he goes, until he finds another thermal to lift him again. By sailing from one thermal to the next in this way, he can cover hundreds of miles. And the convection currents that carry the glider up to the clouds also play a part in their formation. The air in a convection current contains water vapour. As it rises, the air expands and cools, and the water vapour may condense into small water drops. Together, these may form a cumulus cloud. As the drops become bigger, the cloud becomes darker, and ultimately, the drops may be heavy enough to fall as rain. So, convection currents are one of the causes of rain showers. They also cause the well-known sea breezes at the coast on sunny days. These light winds blow onshore during the day and offshore at night. This happens because during the day the sun heats the land more quickly than the sea. The land becomes hotter and convection currents occur. These bring air into the land from the sea. But at night the land cools quickly while the sea remains warm. Convection currents now rise from the sea and the wind direction is reversed. Heat is transmitted in gases and liquids by a process called convection. This occurs because a heated gas or liquid expands, becoming less dense. It moves upwards, carrying heat energy with it. Such movements are called convection currents. Convection currents have a number of practical applications in hot water systems, in heating and ventilation, and in unpowered flying. Naturally occurring convection currents are also partly responsible for some aspects of the weather.